welcome to the Built on Air podcast, the variety show for all things Airtable. Each episode, we cover four different segments. It's always fresh and different and lots of fun while you get the insider info on all things Airtable. Our hosts and guests are some of the most senior experts in the Airtable community. Join us live each week on our YouTube channel every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And join our active community at builtonair.com slash join. Before we begin, a word from our sponsor, OntoAir.com. Any business running on Airtable gets the value that Airtable has, but also needs a few more functions to complete their operations. That's where OntoAir comes in. It's a suite of tools for any business running on Airtable to maximize your operations efficiencies and automations. One customer, John, states that OntoAir enables his business to function properly without having to think about building their own software, and that is pretty invaluable. The OntoAir Airtable apps are amazing, and we use them often and are very happy with the results. So join John and hundreds more customers and take your Airtable to the next level with OntoAir. Sign up today with promo code BUILTONAIR for a 10% discount. Check them out at OntoAir.com. And now let's check out today's episode and see what we built on air. Welcome to the Built on Air podcast. Good to be back with everybody live. This is season 13, episode four. Good to be with you. We've got a full house today. We've got special guest Scott Rose joining us. Welcome back, Scott. Oh, thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, and Scott's got some exciting news for us coming up in the show. Ali and Camille, as always, welcome back. Good to have you. Hello. All right. We've got a good show for you today. I'll walk through what we're going to be talking about today. The Built on Air podcast is an hour-long episode where we go through a couple different segments and keep you up to date on all things Airtable. So we always start off with our around the bases, talking about what's going on in the Airtable communities. Then we'll do a spotlight on Onto Air, our primary sponsor. And then Scott will be sharing uh, some news with us and learning a little bit more about what Scott's been up to last couple months. And... And then uh, Camille will be walking through some automation creation using make.com and Calendly links for, for tracking URL on there. Then a quick shout out to our community. And Leali's going to walk through some cool, a cool demo of, of a trick in Softer, which is a popular uh, third party app. With that, Let's go to round the bases. It's on. First, I come the built on air community, and our very own Camille had some interesting insights. Camille, I you want to share what you found? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was doing <laughs> the a managed field. Yeah, I was doing a like a demo for a client, and I popped open the managed fields. Um, pane on the right hand side underneath tools and I noticed that they have created by and last modified by so now those are the same names as field types but not to confuse these are columns that let you see when was the last time a fields configuration has been edited and who it was configured by so very helpful for debugging issues with a base where suddenly a formula is outputting the wrong result or something like that, or your lookup is broken, you can now see when the last time that field was changed. Um, so very helpful. And I don't think it was announced anywhere. I think it was just sort of a stealth improvement. That's awesome. Does it show the history of changes? You can see the old formula and the new one? No, not that I was able to see. And you can see based on Dan's screen, it doesn't include uh, data from before this was enabled. So mm -hmm. the base I was looking at, I just so happened to have just created it. So it showed every record or every uh, field and, you know, when was the last time each one of those was edited. But you can see that we don't know when the status field was created, but we do know it was last modified by OpenSide at, uh, you know, on the 31st. Today. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, that's interesting. That's weird because they have this information. 
Um, well, I guess not at the field level, right? But they have the last modified. No, I guess not. I guess that's the record yeah. level I'm thinking of. I imagine they do have this data, but it's probably like, you know, compressed because it's not really something that you need to access all the time unless you like submit a support ticket to Airtable and say hey, there's something wrong and they have to like dig through their uh, backlog of like metadata. Um, that is my guess. Um, it'd be great if we could see like what was the last configuration. I don't need to see every time of a formula has ever existed. What you know, what the formula has been each time, but it'd be cool if I could see what was, what was it yesterday? And then I can see if I need to make an adjustment, but yeah, maybe down on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I wonder if, I don't think this is available in the meta API. I don't think that information is there. Hmm. That would be nice. <clears throat> All right. Good find by Camille. Thanks, and man. yeah all right next one this is from uh, ben bailey at first i wasn't quite sure he didn't explain what was going on here but anybody know what what he's talking about here so this is an image that ben shared they changed the display of the number element in interfaces it used to be um centered and not as bold and now it's bold and it's left justified. You can also add a subtitle now, which I really like. Um, yeah. I think this looks a lot slicker than it did before. And it seems to not cut things off as often as it did before. If you have a big number, it would often just cut off and go dot, dot, dot. Um, mm. This holds a lot more. Mm. Now it still doesn't put formatting in, right? It still doesn't put the commas and the period. I mean, the commas automatically for you. No. Yeah. And you that's currency trick for that. What was that? Clear? I was going to say it's silly that it doesn't because, you know, uh, if you look at a currency field under the hood, the dollar sign or whatever your currency symbol is, isn't there. It's really just for display purposes. So there doesn't seem to be a, a good reason why the number elements can't have the same sort of formatting options as number and uh, currency fields. Yeah. The workaround I showed a few weeks ago, or maybe it was last month, was use a currency field, but remove the dollar sign, mm -hmm. which is, but that's sort of annoying. You know, you have two different, well, I guess it's not super annoying, except in the grid view, you would see the dollar sign in the toolbar. Yeah. Yeah. But it used to be, did this used to be center aligned or it was it right was, aligned? It was center aligned and the title was below the number. Now the title is above the number, left aligned, and it's not shown mm -hmm. in these screenshots, but you can have a subtitle, as Ali said. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan. See, I'd still like the there. option to go center aligned. I mean, more control is always better. Well, yeah. 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 Because I think a lot, I think people were responding negatively that they didn't like this change. <laughs> Um, I like it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, some tweaks. Yeah, it would be nice if they at least gave you some left center right alignment options. Yeah, Alex says in the comments, right. you know, well, a, right, a right align makes more sense uh, for numbers. Sure. Numbers, yeah. That's true. Yeah, it would be nice if they just gave us left, center, or right choices for all the elements, any elements, yeah. maybe not even you know, numbers, but everything. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. one more from friend of the show, Jen Rudd. Um, apparently there was a change that happened in pro accounts. Um, let's see, anybody know what she's talking about here? No. I wanna explain this? Yes. So, yeah, so basically, you know how they used to be where in a collaborator field, they gave the option where you could just type in an email address that wasn't tied to a user in, in Airtable. So just a, a, what she called a non-player uh, contact, not, not present, no, sorry, non-playing character. 
is a gaming term that I wasn't familiar with. Um, but basically you could use, you could create a, an email and that person didn't have to have an account. So you could use that just to refer to people that were outside of the, the Airtable base. But now apparently you're required to invite that person to join um, either as a free user or paid, um, you set the permission. So mm -hmm. they're now forcing it to where you can't have these outside contacts in the collaborator field, which is frustrating, especially if you were using that functionality like Jen was. Oh, that's a bummer. I think, did she say later in this thread or was this in a different thread where she said that they, someone said it was a bug and they were gonna work on fixing that or? Am I yeah, that, I think that was in another thread. Because <laughs> it's I so think it maybe used to, yeah maybe it'll get reverted. I think it used to be adding a collaborator would add them to the base, and then they changed collaborator to user field, and then it was you could use any email, and then now it seems to be back to how it was. But I, it makes sense to me that that's a bug because it's like flip flopping functionality back and forth. And that uh, that change was fairly recent. I think it was like six months ago, collaborators became users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what I typically do yeah. for something like this is I would, I create like a, you know, a people table and then I'll have a collaborator field on that table where if they are a user, I put that field in there. So I can still use that for interfaces, um, but yeah, it's a bummer. That's a great workaround. And that also, your workaround also helps with the other problem we have with collaborator fields, which is that they're not linked record fields. So you really do need another field yeah. to link. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah. Collaborators only tell you the person's name, their email and the what they look like, but they don't tell you like what their role is. And mm -hmm. it's hard to summarize based on, you know, Greg, sold a hundred you know products this year versus mike so putting them as linked records gives you all the functionality and more exactly yeah totally and that's where their vision of their connected apps of their uh i can't remember that concept that they presented i think will be a very common use case to have a user's global table mm -hmm. that that has all that information and can be used in any table, any base. <clears throat> Did they say that's coming or is that your wish list? Because that's my wish list too. <laughs> well, they said that that functionality, I can't remember what they call it, the the global tables, global shared table. Oh, they said that is coming, it's on the roadmap? They said well, Q1, you, the, yeah. Nice. The, what was it, like vetted data? It was something along those lines where you have a, a mm. consistent set of data that you use across. Um, so expanding on the sync uh, features that they currently have in place and sort of fleshing that out so you can have one list of users and just use that everywhere. I'm really looking forward to that. Like, um, I don't know if, if anyone here has gotten really into the minutia of syncing tables and how it affects performance but it definitely does affect performance, especially if you have a lot of syncs going out from a base. Um, mm. So I hope that would actually help solve it. So if you've got like, you know, a table of users or like maybe you have locations of a business or something, not, instead of having to sync that out from one place into 10 other places, it would be great to just grab it here, grab it there. I mean, hopefully that'll uh, reduce the load on the performance that syncing does. So you've seen with a lot of syncs, you've seen a significant decrease in speed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's in one of the larger bases I work in. Um, in fact, one of the most cumbersome bases that Airtable has. Proud of that. I got uh, that from Airtable's engineering team. We are on uh, the list. So. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's that's sort of a compliment, I think. I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I don't know how I feel about that, but I, I, I expected it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see. So yeah, that could definitely change behavior on, on 
collaborator fields, which maybe they won't like because then you're not forced to invite people in. <clears throat> so we'll see. Yeah, we'll keep you up to date if this changes or reverts back or they fix it. I could see them maybe making this optional as a quick way to invite users, but not enforcing it. You know, I agree. They yeah. just add an option that says, no, just use as a as the email. Right, or it should just say skip like in the lower left corner of that oh. box. You know, yeah. just skip through that yeah. invitation. It's a scary yeah. thing, yeah. right? Like if, if the wrong person puts something in there without knowing what they're doing, and all of a sudden you've got a privacy issue on your hands and that's all too easy to have happen. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right, let's move on. Uh -oh. Oh, did we lose Dan? I think we lost Dan. Okay. I thought it was just me. <laughs> I figured it was me because I'm still on my hotspot. <laughs> Going to the world of Twitter. Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> What do we do? <laughs> right before the show, was I just not talking about how the internet is so amazing at connecting all of us? Yeah. Well, <laughs> did I drop off? Yes. Yeah, were, you able, you, were you able to hear us, Dan, or no? No, probably not. No, it was everything was spinning. It. Yeah, I'm. I'm losing connection today. Uh, All right, we'll give it another try. So this is a post from uh, Lenny. Um, I don't know where he's from. Looks like a um, podcast. Runs a podcast and. Did an interview with, uh, did any of you meet Zoll? Zoll, I don't know how to say her name. Sorry, Zoll. I think she went by Zoe. I met her. Um, she's no longer at Airtable, but she was an early uh, marketing person at Airtable and, um, and has since left. But she's talking about how in the early days of Airtable, which apparently precedes me because I did not get this talking about swag that they gave away. They used to give out, um, give out, uh, AirPods. What? <laughs> and, um, wow. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, with, um, air table logos on them. That's what Allie. Uh, Allie's <laughs> got them. Oh my God. That's amazing. Where was I? Oh, what year I, was that? I won that. I won them in a formula contest in 2018, I think. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> You're the wow. first. I, my prize I haven't seen anybody showing those off since I've been in the world of Airtable. Yeah. And Allie, those have been sitting right next to you within arm's reach this whole time. <laughs> well, yeah. to, be, to be fair. Oh, next my God. I don't have a back. I don't I have a pairs of socks from them and a shirt. I got, yeah. Yeah. I got some recent got swag backpack. recently. I assume you all did. Um, mm -hmm. So they have been generous with swag. I haven't gotten any iPods or or uh, AirPods or backpacks. It's That's a good backpack. <laughs> I, I like it. it. I time. use it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yours behind you, Allie, over your right shoulder? That's it does. Idea. Yep. It, Damn. We're nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a. Uh, I love it. A lot wow. Of I am so <laughs> far behind on swag. I thought I was doing well on the swag department, but. No, nope. you got to go to the Airtable conferences. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I got to go this year. Love yeah. it. So, yeah, Airtable has been pretty good about swag she yeah uh oh oh damn we lost. we lost you again for a second oh, oh no i um, think i'm back i think i'm back <laughs> um talking um, about giving high-end swag instead of just kind of the the cheap stuff um mm -hmm. 
Well, I imagine it was back so, when they and there's a had link a to the full interview. If you want to learn about the early days of marketing at Airtable, there's a full interview there. Oh, okay, right. one more. Um, hopefully, before I get kicked off again, <laughs> um, this one came. You can hear me. I'm back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One more. Um, this one comes from uh, Troy, who runs uh, Automation Ace, a consulting group for Airtable. Um, talking about the just actually, this is in response to somebody um, saying they lifted the limits of 30 automations. Um, and so it looks like it increased to 50. I think I knew that. I can't remember if that's how new that is. Um, but I thought it was worth mentioning that even if the automation is inactive, it counts against your, your limit. And so you can't just turn some off. If you have any there, it counts against your 50, which can be frustrating. Hmm. Oh yeah. They, but they need a search bar now because I, I was working in a very complex space that had not 50, it had something like, you know, 25 or, or so automations, but I needed to find, and I, there were so many sections, I could not find the automation I was looking for. So now that the limit is higher, it, when it was like 10 or whatever the original limit was, you didn't need a search bar. Made perfect sense not to include <laughs> one, but now there's 50 and, <laughs> and sections. So I have to <laughs> open them all up to see what I'm looking at. Um, yeah. But yay, more. Right. Searching within the history would also be very well. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> it's so needed. It's awful. Yeah. And you know what the other thing that, that, that I really, really, really need is notifications of automations that have failed it only goes to the last person to turn it on i think the last person who turned on the automation right. and so so which is really bizarre because you actually don't know where the email automations i mean the error on error emails are going and so, and then, and then once you do sort of figure it out, you have to pick like one person and say, okay, go through these automations and turn them off and turn them on again. And you will be the one who gets these error emails. Yep. No uh, fun. <laughs> I know. I know, right? Nothing. We Always do. room for improvement. Always. We just came up with three major improvements today. All three of us. Yep. This is why we do the podcast. <laughs> Right. That, their product development team is it has to be watching this every week. We give the best ideas. I hope so. Well, based on how often they're implemented, I, my guess is they're probably not listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. If you are, let us know in the comments. <clears throat> yes. One All last right. thing. These yeah. are uh, around the bases of what's going on in the Airtable mm -hmm. community. Awesome. Yeah. I was just going to say, Swag I learned the well. other day. Swag's always that welcome. Swag stands for, it's an acronym. It stands for stuff we all get. <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. I learned oh, that the no. other day. That's hilarious. I did not know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, not all of us. I don't have AirPads. I wonder. <laughs> what, what happened there? <laughs> Love it. That is hilarious. All right. All right. I'm back. Okay. We learned the definition of swag. <clears throat> All right. Let's move on to, to our primary sponsor. If I can uh, stay live with us, I keep cutting out. Um, Ontair is an all one toolkit to run your business on table more with your Airtable business. Uh -oh. So today we're going to continue with our um, and in case a new feature that just went live last week. Um, we have now the Abu implement a concept of saving your form as a draft. And so sometimes if you have a large form mm -hmm. and you don't want to force people to have to fill it all out right in one sitting, we now have the ability to save it as a draft. And the cool thing is it actually saves in your Airtable base as a draft. 
and we implemented something unique. I don't think I've seen this anywhere else. Um, but what we do is we allow you to select a field that acts as sort of your status field. So a common use case would be a status dropdown field, but it could be a text field um, or another type of field. And basically what you do is you we automatically set up that if they're saving it as a draft, then it will set the status field to draft or whatever field you select. And then if they, if they submit it as completed, then you can change that status, that status field to um, something else. Actually, I want it to be. Um, actually, I'm going to refresh my fields. I think I just updated and added a new one. Um, initial review. Yeah, there we go. So, so what now? What this does is, if I look at um, the preview, I'm going to open this up in a new tab. How give you the I keep drinking another or a new one. You can now um, there's now a save as draft. And so the cool thing about this is if you save it as a draft and the required fields, it will bypass checking them or requiring them. And so um, if I don't put a title there or a location, um, I can still save it as a draft. And what that will do is it will give you a URL and you can just copy this URL and then you can now revisit that record and continue editing it. And Very if nice. you look in the air table with the status, that you specified where they click it at. And so now it'll say as a draft. And then if I, I want it should Hmm. I don't know. Is this when we should have had like stand up comedy routines prepared? I was going to say, I should have brought puppets. <laughs> I actually have a puppet right next to me. Yeah. Do you hear me, Scott? Oh, now I heard you. Yes. But we cannot see your screen. Yeah, the either. screen is white. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Can now you hear me now? Am I back? Yes. I'm yeah, back. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So now if I were to, um, complete it, not submit as um, as a finished now it will update and it'll update the status to the completed status and then update all the other fields so very cool trick to um, work with forms that are long and need um, partial submission and, and it will actually save it so one of the use cases is being able to email people and let them know that they haven't finished it because you'll have the partial information saved in Airtable and you'll know based off the status field that it's still being worked on until it changes to this status, then you know that they, they completed it. So check that out at ontair.com slash forms and we'll get you access to the, the new forms standalone product that we launched. That is really awesome. Scott, you ready? Yes. Uh-oh. Got that <laughs> with us. I'm going to turn away. I'm going to keep dropping, so you might not hear from me again if I keep dropping, but hopefully it still works with you going. So.
Let oh, us know, okay. Scott, if you cool. want to share your screen or anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me share my screen. And Dan, that was really cool what you just showed. That was like a long-standing request of many people. Uh, like, is there any form software out there where we could save our form as a draft? Mm -hmm. Now there is. Yeah, that's great. Okay, I'm just going to try to share my whole window here. Let me see if this goes. Get Can you see? on. Okay, perfect. Yep. So there has been over the last couple months, there's been a hole in the Airtable community because a lot of us, we actually got first involved in the Airtable community based on this great discussion forum that Airtable used to have on their website. Uh, it was based on this discussion forum software called Discourse. And it was great because it really inspired conversations and the newest, hottest conversations would, would levitate to the top and people could easily and quickly get involved in really productive conversations and insightful conversations. And it really brought a lot of us together. And then in December, Airtable pulled the plug on that forum and they replaced it with a new forum that that is more of a blogging platform and it hasn't really had the same cohesive community building effect in fact we feel like many of us feel like it actually had the opposite effect because the software is so difficult to use and follow and engage that a lot of people stopped visiting that forum and so i am announcing today tableforums.com, which is the unofficial Airtable discussion community. And it's a place where you can discuss Airtable with peers and experts. And it is based on the familiar discourse software that everybody loved from before. And we've already got some of the stars in the community already posting there. You can see Hannah is posting about onto air forms and onto air backups. Bill French is posting there. Kavan has already posted some incredible tips there. So we've got Justin Barrett is posting. We've got all your favorite people already starting to post there. And this is going to be like a very exciting place. Um, I feel to sort of bring back the magic of the old community. Uh, for anything related to Airtable, news about Airtable, um, external apps that have something to do with with Airtable. Oh, I see. I have this. Uh, this this is actually wrong. This shouldn't say that there. So I'm still modifying the descriptions there. Um, and another cool thing about this forum is that we are tying it into the built on air Slack community. So when new messages are posted here, there is a new channel in the Slack community called Airtable Forums. And the new discussions here will show up in the Slack community. So it'll be a very easy way for people that are already in the Slack community to know when there's new activity happening here in the forums. And people can come and check it out and post and ask questions. So this will be hopefully the most exciting place on the web for people to ask questions, discuss Airtable, get answers from experts. And I really hope that it just has a lot of, uh, a lot of magic and helps people get into the Airtable world, just like it got me into the Airtable world. That was, I probably should have led with that by saying that that's what actually sucked me into Airtable was the original Airtable community. Um, because I don't think I would have fallen so deep down the rabbit hole if it wasn't for that first community that was based on this software. So we're bringing back the magic. <laughs> it's like looking at an That's old awesome. friend. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> it is like looking at an old friend. And by the way, these uh, categories, we're, we're still building them out. You can see we've got some things really uh, separated here and what we think will be the most useful categories for people. Um, we're going to be doing some cool things with the show and tell. 
We're going to be uh, highlighting uh, superstars in the community here. I'm planning on doing uh, video interviews with people that we're going to put there in the future. Um, I'm going to start putting a lot of tips and tricks in this section. We're going to hope that people put job postings here. So hopefully, you know, the goal is to make this like a really active community that will tie into the built on air Slack community. So we can sort of bounce back and forth between these two wonderful communities. One of the reasons that, um, you know, Dan has helped me set this up as well. Dan and I are sort of like putting our brains together for this. And one of the things about the Slack community is Slack in general is a little trickier, you know, to keep track of conversations. You can sometimes get lost in threads and it's not as easy to search. And so it's, you know, it's a little more complex and it also adds a little more friction for people who don't want to download an extra app. What's cool about this is it's easy to stay on top of your favorite conversations. Uh, it's it's web-based, so you don't need any other apps. Well, I guess Slack has a web version too. So, um, but it's a little bit it's a little bit lower friction and a little easier to search. So, I think that those are some of the advantages for that. Yeah. For Slack, you can't uh, publicly browse a community, I don't believe. But with uh, discourse in your table forums, you would be able to at least search for a similar question if someone has already asked it. And if the answer is there, you've got it. And if there hasn't been a question asked, then you would create an account and start engaging. Or if you're a, just a nerd, you would make an account anyway and just sort of be part of the community. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So this would be a little bit easier in those regards and um yeah and it's also you know the other cool thing about the discourse yeah i'm excited we're, so yeah we're oops oh sorry yeah go ahead oh no go ahead can you hear me dad uh-oh uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> um I think he was saying he was excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. It's also really, really easy, you know, to edit your posts Sorry, in I'm back. Course. Oh, you're back. You're still frozen to me. <laughs> Camille, I just noticed. Does your shirt yeah, have back roses now. Sorry. on it? Rose is my yeah, last flower. Yeah, I was just saying I'm yeah. I'm excited to to part with <laughs> Oh, can you try saying that one more time, Dan? Well, <laughs> oh, you know what? I wonder if he has access to the chat. If he types it up, I can say what he's. Can you type up what you're saying? I don't know if it's even Mac. Check. All right. Dan, you were excited. <laughs> but I am excited. So excited. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, keep it in. <laughs> um yeah just just saying excited to am i still here yes mm -hmm. uh, yes no can you hear me yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah just excited to uh participate with with scott and sponsor the the new forum and like like scott mentioned we'll we'll uh announce in the slack community where you can see every question that gets posted um, in the forums, there will be a channel in the in the built on air Slack, so you can see them all and, and link over to them. And uh, yeah, hopefully everybody joins and participates in in that community and answer questions. Yeah, I'm super excited. I think you could you could even tell like what Camille was saying. It's like seeing an old friend. Like it's so easy to interact with discourse. It's so easy to write posts and make links and embed things. It's just you know, it's, it really, it's conducive for conversations, which is what I love the most about it. And so hopefully we'll, hopefully it'll be successful and people will really flock to it and it'll grow over time. Yep. There, there are just certain types of questions that are easier to answer, but depending on what platform you're using. So there's a very large Facebook community that's sort of helmed by Chris Dancy, um, which is great for really short questions because it's Facebook. If someone is like, there's something wrong with my formula, 
I hate typing formulas in just regular comment boxes. It's terrible. And with Slack and the built on air community, that's like the perfect uh, medium for a lot of different types of questions, unless I have to do a lot of, you know, a lot of code. Like if someone has a JavaScript question, it's difficult for me because I'm typically on my phone with Slack, but the original Airtable community was like perfect for a answering specifically those types of questions and all other questions too. But just you had the screen real estate, the editor was just nice and clean. It didn't get in your face. You could add links pretty easily and all that. And so, you know, looking forward to being able to be helpful again on table forums. Totally. Tot that was very well said. That is so well said because I'm looking forward to being helpful again too. It was too hard mm -hmm. to help others on that new platform that 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 was created. Yeah. Beautifully said. <laughs> so that's it. I'm very oh I guess Dan is, is, is Dan frozen again. Well, he, <laughs> Dan is frozen. he controls the show, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to do from here. <laughs> Uh, I was doing those those pauses, like to, that that pause for the host to come in and right. You no, know, give it time was... to breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dan, I think I'm back. Yay! Welcome back. I guess you guys can't share your screen right without Dan being able to accept so it. We can prep our our screens to be shared, but we can't, you know, broadcast them. And now he's not here, so that's so. This that's, is is this where we bring out the puppets, or this is where we bring out the puppets? Um, <laughs> <wow. Allie. laughs> Should I show you my puppet? I actually have one. Uh, Ali, um, you were saying, like on a previous show, that uh, in regards to the forums, that just like me, you fell in love with Airtable because of the the previous forums. <laughs> I absolutely did. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, just people, the willingness of people. And I find that not just in the Airtable forum, but, you know, across all of the platforms that we're all a part of, which I think is amazing. Um, oh super excited for the launch of this new forum, Scott. Thank you for putting it together. Oh, ah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you guys for being a part of it. Yay. Dan. Uh, Dan. Do you want to Dan. mention the perk? Oh, yeah, yeah. So Dan and I, oh, welcome back, Dan. Yeah, so Dan and I are joining forces. We're, we're both uh, financially supporting the new forum. So it'll be, it's like a joint venture between Scott World and Built on Air. And we also wanted to get people, you know, excited about using it. So Dan and I were talking about a great little perk that for the first 50 people who post in the forums will reward them with a special badge that they can carry with them forever on their profile that will say founding contributor. Love that. Mm. Can mm -hmm. I make a You can make a suggestion? Yes, you can. Can we preserve one for the mysterious W. <laughs> Vanderhall if he ever returns? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The Does first 49 know? people. Right. 49, <laughs> the first 49 people. And then the 50th will be reserved for W. Van Hall. Did That's I say his all... name right, by the way? I think so. Yeah. Just in case, you know. Just in case. Oh, we'll keep man. our fingers crossed that he comes back. If we could Legend. get him back, that would be... That would be like one of those like cold case podcasts we could do on finding W Van. Honestly, yeah. we would for for the table forums. We would probably have to do like a a preservation, like <laughs> like this day in Airtable history, where we take one of his solutions from like the ancient forums, which are probably now difficult to find because they're at least four years old. So finding whatever topics those were, but moving them to the new one so people can find it as they're actively engaging and then pointing out how so much has changed since the very <laughs> roundabout but solid solutions were come across. I think it just would be a fun little mini series. I love it. I love it. I think we have a new project for this year. <laughs> it's great. It'd be great to get him on the podcast. That'd be mythical. 
Oh. We gotta find him. <laughs> I don't yes. know where he is. <laughs> right? If you're listening. <laughs> All right, I'm home. gonna move on. All right, my internet completely goes out. So we're gonna go on. Scott, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. So next we've got uh, Camille. He's gonna share some automation. Is uh, my screen showing? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So this came up quite literally yesterday. And uh, Scott, you pointed out earlier, I'm wearing a floral shirt and I'm doing a make demo. Uh, <laughs> what better day to do so than with Scott Rose with us? So <laughs> uh, we've had uh, a client who, you know, it was more complicated than what I'm showing because what they needed to do was send their clients, their customers to Stripe to pay for something and then redirect them to a Calendly page where they book some sort of follow-up appointment. And then <laughs> after that's done, do a bunch of other things. But what the issue with that was um, they needed to take when a Calendly appointment was booked and modify the Airtable record associated with it in some way. So I was looking through and you can pre-fill a Calendly link um, with whatever fields are showing. So that includes the location, the person's name, their email. If you have any custom questions, you can pre-fill those, but you couldn't pre-fill hidden fields. And I was banging my head against the wall as to what do I do? I need to pass the record ID, in this case for sites, through to Calendly and then back from Calendly back into Airtable. And mm. originally, I thought my solution would just be, okay, I just have to have a field that shows to the user and hope they don't type in it or edit it. But uh, eventually, I settled on a workaround, which isn't too bad, I think. Um, what I'm doing is using UTM tracking. Um, I think it was last episode or the episode before we had talked about how we don't know what UTM stands for. Uh, the U stands for urchin. And I don't know why, but right. these are typically used to say for marketing campaigns, when someone clicks on a link for you to know they got this link from Google or they got this link from Facebook. And that helps you know which of your marketing platforms are the most successful. There's UTM source, campaign, and then a couple other UTM properties that you could pass through. Any URL and Calendly is no exception. And they actually include the UTM parameters when um, subsequent API calls are made, which means I can pre-fill the name and the email and location as I previously said, but I could also pass the UTM source as record ID. It doesn't really matter which UTM parameter I use. I chose source because source record ID, it just made sense to me. Um, what you're seeing here is a button field with a formula concatenating the simple link to the Calendly form. And then, of course, I'm uh, doing query parameters to infill the name, making sure to use encode URL component to make sure that that link comes in fine without any spaces or weird characters. And then putting in the record ID. The record ID is always alphanumeric with no spaces, so I don't actually need the URL component uh, there. So uh, the idea is you would email your clients or your customers this link to them. So um, I'm going to do one that doesn't have the walkthrough date pre-filled. They would click this link. They would pick a time. And on the next page, you'll see I have John Doe, my email, and the location all pre-filled because that was uh, what I specified in my um, uh, in my URL parameters. But if I look at this and look all the way at the end, um, UTM source is still in there, the record ID, and it's not being displayed to the user. So unless someone was really focusing on the URL, which absolutely no one does, unless mm -hmm. you're looking for something, um, what I'm doing now is just scheduling uh, none the wiser. I click the schedule event, and then I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch uh, 
<laughs> well, you will notice that the walkthrough date has now been pre-filled with the date that I selected. That is accomplished with a very simple make scenario. So I'm starting off by watching for events. So when um, you're using make and you're using this module, you can see when someone schedules um, an event or when they cancels it and or when they cancel it. I have only enabled uh, when someone schedules. Uh, and then I'm getting, um, let me actually go to history to sort of explain a gotcha that I found in, in doing this. So when you watch for events, this is the output that you get. You have two similar uh, parameters that come through, event and the URI. The URI, if you were to look this up, would give you this exact set of information. But event, um, you know, this starts off, you'll notice that the first part of the URI is the same value as event. So it's adding some things specific to this person acknowledging that they're going to go to this event. But you'll notice the parameters that come in, it doesn't include the date of the event. And that's the part that I need. In order to get that, I have to get the event using the event parameter. Hopefully that makes sense. If I look at the configuration for this module, I'm pulling in the event and not the URI. If I pulled in the URI, I'd get the same set of parameters again. Instead, I want this different set of parameters, which will give me the start time and the end time in addition to a couple of different things that weren't in the original batch of data. Once I have the start time, then all I'm doing really is passing in that start time to the field. So I'm logging it in. Of course, you can make this more complicated. You'll notice there's no error handling really. This is just to give you an idea of what one might do if you needed to have someone scheduling a Calendly appointment affect Airtable in some way. This is the solution I had come up with that doesn't rely on using a field that is visible to your uh, potential customers. That is so cool. Camille, yeah. I have a question. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Ali, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. No, no, go right ahead. Um, did you, is it required for you to use UTM underscore source in order for Calendly to keep it as part of the link? Like if you had labeled it anything else, would it drop it? Yes. So I can't just put in random stuff. If you had, you'll see uh, one of the parameters here is question and answers. If I go back, you know, if I had custom questions in here, uh, technically, this is a, a custom question. It comes in by default, but it's qu uh, custom. If I wanted to pre-fill that, you would do another URL parameter, ampersand A1 equals, and then whatever that field is supposed to equal. Um, if I wanted to do something else, it'd be A2 or A3. Continue on for how many fields I have. But if it's not a field in Calendly, if I don't have a, a field prep for that, I can't fill that in in the URL and have it pass. It won't take. Wow. So that's why I was looking at, OK, well, what can I fill? Wow. I could dump stuff in the location field. But if you use like uh, Calendly lets you preset some like a, a Zoom link or a Google Meet link. And my client was using that. So I couldn't use location field. They were already using it for something else. And I need the person's name and I need the person's email. So what field can I fill in? Well, I noticed under tracking, wow. it includes campaign, source, medium, content, term, and for some reason, Salesforce unique ID. Um, if I wanted to be cheeky, I could have used the Salesforce unique ID because that seems really, <laughs> really fa favoritism. <laughs> it's what it boils for real. down to. For real. A UTM is all universal. Uh, parameters in Salesforce is very specifically one company. Uh, so long, you know, make a long answer short. You could use any of the other UTMs or Salesforce IDs, but you can't just put some random, like the name of your question. That's not how uh, Calendly would pass the information. It just wouldn't pass through. 
Amazing. That that I think it's hard to understate what a what a breakthrough this is. This that is a huge find. Those six hidden fields. Yeah, and it's six. <laughs> it's not just one. You could presumably, if you as long as you keep straight in your head, when I say campaign, I really mean, you know, this. And when I say source, I really mean this. As long as you could keep that straight, yeah. use all six of these terms and fill it with just stuff, yeah. I guess. That is incredible. That is an incredible, incredible find and workaround to a Calendly limitation. Yeah. That's unbelievable. I, I, I'm, I could put this to use right away with some of my clients. Thank I, you. I, yeah. It came up yesterday. <laughs> wow. Literally yesterday. I was like, surely I could pre-fill a hidden field. Nope. You certainly Ellie, can't. Ellie, Ellie, does this not prove that Camille is the best detective in our industry? <laughs> Everyone knows Camille's a rock star. That's, um, <laughs> but no, seriously, like this is huge because like I run into some of the most often or problems I see the most often when using Calendly and automations is if I have like a lot of people will use a different email address when they're filling out the Calendly form mm -hmm. as compared to what you might have in Airtable. Yeah. And this solves that issue right off the bat. So that's amazing. Awesome. Totally. Incredible. Love it. All right. Well done, Camille. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me transition quickly. I think I'm still alive. I can hear you. <laughs> yes. My internet. Yeah. Russell Bishop All right. says quick shout out to our built on air community. We'd love to have you join. Uh, amazing conversations happening every day. Join us, builtonair.com slash join. We'll get you access for free. Please join us. And finally, Ali is going to walk us through some cool stuff in softer. All right. Yeah. Excellent. And yes, uh, what Scott was about to say, Russell Bishop, I love his comment. 20 second delay, Dan, is my favorite, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's um, all right. So um, this is a continuation of a little mini demo I did, I think, last season on softer. Um, this is using my uh, family's business, um, New England Kenworth, which we sell trucks as an example. Um, I hate these pictures. It's using the last photo in an attachment field um, instead of the first one. So I just haven't fixed that yet. But um, the use case I'm going to go over today is using a form in Softer to add records to Airtable. And so there's a lot of different um, use cases as to why you might want to do that. Um, I'm going to just go over importing a lead for a particular unit into Airtable. So if I'm a customer and I'm looking at inventory and I click on a particular truck, um, I would love to be able to fill out a form and say, hey, I'm interested in this truck and have that populate the base that is behind all of this. Um, so Softer, and they've actually made more improvements to this since I last did it, which is super cool. They have something that um, I'm not going to go over today that I've been wanting for a long time in their ability to pre-fill forms with all sorts of different hidden fields. I'm gonna go over one of those use cases today and touch but on- But why would one. you ever wanna pre-fill a hidden field? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. So it's, and it makes sense. It's it's weird. It's different from like most form like that are out there, um, but it's kind of cool how it works. So uh, this is important that you, pull, you pick the um, custom form. If I'm looking at the different form options, this doesn't really work with simple contact form that I've found. Um, the customizable form is the one that I go with um, to get this to work. So when I'm looking at this form, I'm gonna scroll down on my sidebar here and I'm gonna pick a destination because I have to tell Softer where I want this data to go when it's submitted. Um, and I'm going to pick right here, send to data source, and they've got all these other options. It's really cool. Um, so when I, when I select send data source, I can pick my API key and then the base that I want it to go to, which I have. Okay. 
MEK inventory. And the table is, let's see, any second now that black loading bar is getting there. Awesome. So leads is where I want this to go. Now, when I look at my form fields, I have this option here where it says map to. And so I can map all of my fields to the particular fields in Airtable that I want things to go to. So, so full names, full name fields, email in email fields, so on and so forth. Do, do, do. I have phone somewhere, phone. And here's where things get inter interesting. I'm just gonna delete company size. Um, so all of this is fine and good, but how do I know what unit the form was submitted for, right? I, nothing in here is capturing what page I'm on in software or what um, truck I'm actually looking at when I'm filling this form at, out. If I go to add a field, I'm gonna scroll down to a type of hidden. And I'm gonna say, I wanna map this to the field called unit. And let me pull up the base just so you see what this looks like. Um, I have a leads table and I have this linked record field called unit, which is linking to my all current inventory table, which is the same table. And this is the important part, the same table that this list details is being drawn off of. So when I'm looking at this list details page or block, um, I'm looking at the all current inventory table. And this form is also filling that all current inventory table out as well. When I go to my hidden fields, here's where software is really cool. Pre-fill this with all sorts of different things. Um, the one I'm really interested in now is for the current record. That means whatever page I'm on, whatever details I'm looking at record is gonna be this current record option. And then I can pick any number one, any number of the fields here that I have record ID, yes. Um, for that. And then I'm also going to add um, another hidden field very quickly. And I'm going to map this to, I have a field called source on my leads table, which is just saying, where did this come from? Just like UTM source. Um, and instead of uh, picking a value from this list, I'm just going to type in a custom value and I'll call that just softer. And when I go to the publish and look at the page, Do, do, do. Actually, I don't even need to publish as previous. Cool stuff with this hidden fields is you could fill in, if you have a current, if you have logged in users to software, you could fill it in with their record ID to say, um, do, do, do. Hmm. if I scroll down, down to fill out my form really quickly, just do I'll say submit and I'll see I'm on stock number U50 here. And when I say submit inquiry, do, 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 eventually through <laughs> there entered in, um, it has a source of software and I'm linking back to that unit. Um, so super cool. It's not super straightforward to figure out how to do this. So I hope that this. Yeah, that's very helpful. Um, very cool. Yeah. Uh -oh. We lose Ali. I can't tell if that's Ali freezing or me. I know, right? Ali's frozen for me. Can't Allie's... have them all. <laughs> it's not Allie, just me. Everybody well, gets one. Ellie, if you're watching from somewhere, that, that was very cool and very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Thank you. Was, well, that, uh, you figure, what's that? Figure it out. 
I'm sorry, what? Yeah. It's like, oh, wow. You can. <laughs> this has been fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, what an interesting uh, episode. Yeah. Very interesting episode. <laughs> Apologies for the technical difficulties. Cut. We'll get us all back on again another time in the future. But thank you, Scott, for coming on and sharing your exciting news. I know you've been working diligently for many months on a couple months on getting this out there and much needed. Exciting to see what will happen with the table forums. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Cool. And Thanks, Ali, please. Camille, thank you for showcasing your talents and skills and in, in helping improve our Airtable skill sets. So until then, we will see you all next week. Take care. Bye. Take care. Thank you for joining today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out our sponsor, ontair.com, and we will see you next time on the Built on Air podcast. <laughs>